Praise the Lord. If you are there tonight, I said, Praise the Lord. I'm sure you are ready. You don't know what I'm talking about. I said you are ready to cut your check. Where is that check? Where is your check? Where is your check? We need to present that check now to the bank of heaven. A thousand and one blessings. Somebody shout amen. Every blessing you are claiming there, the Lord will fulfill in Jesus' name. The day of a new beginning. I said the day of a new beginning. The retreat of a new beginning. Revival session of a new beginning. That new dawn has come in your life in Jesus' name. Every message you have heard during this retreat. From salvation. Unto the family and finance. And every blessing you have claimed. Everything you have opened your mouth to tell the Lord. What you have written on that check. What you have not written but has been provided for you. Heaven will pour everything upon your life in Jesus' name. And you'll find that this coming year is the beginning of a new dawn in your life. Everything you lost in the past, you are going to recover in the new year. Greater joy. Greater fulfillment. Greater happiness. Complete healing. Total health. Miracle in every direction. You turn to the right, miracle. Turn to the left, miracle. You go to work, miracle. You come to church, miracle. You are resting at home, miracle. I was waiting for the check. I was waiting for the check. Where is the check? Raise it up. Father, in Jesus' name, you are the God of all flesh and the God of all power and the God of all authority. Lord, I pray you look at everyone, every child, every student, every youth, every Christian, every believer, every brother, every sister, every papa, every mama, everyone here. Oh, Lord, I pray. Mercy for everyone. Yeah. Abundant love for everyone. Yeah. Your sufficiency for everyone. Yeah. And I pray that all those deep desires of their hearts, which they have expressed or they have not been able to express on that check, Lord, I pray. I pray, oh Lord, you will give unto them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let them know they are serving a God of all possibilities. Let everyone know we are serving a God of all power. A God of love. And a God of all provision. And I pray that you abundantly bless everyone in Jesus name. Put testimony in every mouth. And I pray that nobody will have any check that bounce that is not paid everything will be paid in jesus name confirm your miracle upon every life let the joy of the lord be the strength of your people but thank you because we know you have answered tonight as we come and look at the message lord i pray every good thing in the message will be the possession of everyone thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray and the prosperous people of God said God has blessed you already you can sit down tonight as we come to look at the word of God we're coming to look at Pentecost from a new direction Pentecost from a new perspective Pentecost from the side of heaven and from the side of the provision of the Lord himself. Pentecost is talking about the outpouring of the Spirit of God. The baptism in the Holy Ghost, the immersion in the river of fire. 
that the Lord Almighty himself has promised is giving us a preview in the Old Testament. Pentecost, baptism in the Holy Ghost, a pouring of the Holy Ghost that comes upon the church, upon the people of God, is a peculiarly New Testament experience. But we have the preview in the Old Testament. Let me show you what I mean. I'm looking at Numbers chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 29. Numbers 11 verse 29. And Moses said unto him, And this thou for my sake, would God, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Spirit the Lord will put his Spirit upon them. Everybody knows, if you're reading the Bible, that Moses was filled with the Spirit of God. His word was the word of power. From the time God put the word in his mouth, and he went to Egypt, and he appeared before Pharaoh, the power of God never failed him. All through the wilderness journey, miracle upon miracle upon miracle, because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. And here Moses said, How I desire, how I wish that the Spirit of God will be upon all the people of God. When he said all the people of God, he wasn't only thinking about preachers. He wasn't only thinking about Christian workers. He was thinking about and talking about literally everybody. And as you go through the Old Testament, you'll find that the people in the Old Testament, those who had this preview of being feeling, indwelling, outpouring of the Holy Spirit we are talking about, that Holy Ghost came upon them and made them successful in whatever the Lord put in their hand to do. Look at Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31 from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bazaliel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah, notice verse 3. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. You see, he wasn't a preacher, but he was to work in material things. And God said, and put him my spirit upon him. The spirit of wisdom. You come to First Samuel chapter 16 and you find part of this preview how the spirit of God came upon David. First Samuel chapter 16 reading from verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And from this day forward, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. He had just been anointed king. And he wasn't in the position yet. Look at verse 23. And it came to pass when the evil spirit came from God was upon Saul that David took and harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well and the evil spirit departed from him. A preview of what the spirit of God does when he comes in our lives. These were Old Testament characters who didn't even attain Unto the measure of the immersion and the infilling and the outpouring and the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And yet, see what the Holy Ghost did through them. 
by the anointing outpouring indwelling of the spirit second kings chapter 2 in second kings chapter 2 verse 9 and it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee and Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. A preview of what was yet to happen. The spirit of God came in a double measure upon Elisha. And you see the great miracles that were done in his ministry. Isaiah chapter 44. In Isaiah chapter 44, Reading from verse 3. I said chapter 44 verse 3. And I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. The idea of pouring here is to totally pour upon the whole person. Until you are drenched in the water and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring and that Isaiah himself that said that you know about his life and about his prophecy and you know the manifestation of the spirit of God upon his life Isaiah chapter 8 chapter 8 verse 18 behold I and the children whom the Lord has given me for, for signs and wonders in Israel. For signs and wonders in Israel. If that happened to the Old Testament characters who had the preview of the baptism, the immersion, the outpouring of the Spirit of God that was to come at Pentecost. If the preview is so wonderful, I about the real scene that was still coming. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Look at this. When the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the lord shall lift up a standard against him those old testament characters had a lot of battles they fought a lot of crossroads they came to a lot of challenges they faced but the assurance they had even before the new testament era is that when that enemy will come I will come in like a flood. The Spirit of God will lift up his standard against the enemy. And the enemy will be beating back. Like your enemy, all of them, they'll be beating back in Jesus' name. You see, Kel, as, as we're going on, you see the progression. The progression in the sense that it's becoming more definitive. It's becoming more decisive. As to various steps and the definite steps that the Lord will take as he's going to pour out the Spirit upon his people. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel 36, reading from verse 25. Then will I sprinkle water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. That talks about salvation. Cleansing from idols, from filthiness, from iniquity, from transgression, from uncleanness. Look at verse 26. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. 
and I will give you an heart of flesh. That talks about sanctification. You see, it's becoming more definite as to what steps the Lord will take. As to what experiences he will give. He will give salvation, conversion, regeneration, freedom from sin, freedom from idols, cleansing from filthiness. Not only that, number two, he will sanctify. He'll take away the stony heart. He'll give a heart of flesh. Look at number three in verse 27. And I'll put my spirit within you. I will put my spirit within you. It'll becoming clearer and clearer. And also come to Mark, Micah. Micah chapter three. Micah is now saying, it's got the experience. He's saying, even though he has not gone into New Testament era, New Testament dispensation, Micah said, I got it, I got it. Isaiah spoke about it, I got it. Ezekiel spoke about it, I got it. Look at Micah chapter 3 verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. So you will see, as you look at the Old Testament, you find that Moses desired it. And he said, would God, that all of God's people were prophets, and the Spirit of God will be upon them. Then you find scattered examples of the people that received a measure of the power. And now Joel looks forward to the future and he looks forward to what is actually going to happen and it's joel that painted the full picture as to what will happen which now occurred at the time of the children of god that followed after the lord jesus christ and their own pentecost came and thank god your own pentecost has come Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Reading from verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That was the desire, the pronouncement, and everything that Moses said. And now God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. That's looking forward to Pentecost. And that's what, why we're here today. To talk about Pentecost and to talk about the purpose of Pentecost. The purpose of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them, clothing tongues like as of fire. And it sat on each of them. And they were all filled how many of them were filled? And they were all filled. If you were there that day, what would have happened to you? You would be filled. And Jesus Christ, the same, tell me, yesterday, and today, and forever. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. See the explanation that the Apostle Peter gave concerning that Pentecost that came on them. Verse 16. 
But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants, and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Peter the apostle was explaining the experience that those apostles and the disciples had. But now, he went beyond that day. And he, he assured the people there was still going to be a repetition. It's still going to continue. Where did he say that? Look at it in verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that goes beyond the 120 that goes beyond the people that just received because they said you they were not even saved at that time that they were just going to be saved because they said repent and after repentance they would also experience in the order in which Ezekiel had prophesied. And then it says, "Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 39. For the promise is unto you, those of them that were present, and to your children, those who are not there, and to all that are far off, those who are Gentiles, are far off, those who are here today, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And so you see, from the time of Moses, a desire, looking forward, that that time will come. And the prophets were prophesying about it. And Joel made it very clear, the time was coming. The fullness of Pentecost, Pentecostal power, fulfilled in every life. And then he says, far off, afar off as many as the Lord our God shall call. Tonight we're looking at the purpose of that Pentecost. The purpose of Pentecost. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the promise of personal Pentecost. The promise of personal Pentecost. The receiving of the Spirit of God was personal for Moses. Personal for the 70 elders one by one. That the Lord took the Spirit of Moses and gave to them. Personal for Joshua. Personal for David. Personal for Jeremiah. Personal for Isaiah. Personal for Ezekiel. Personal for Micah. Personal for you. I said personal for you. The promise of personal Pentecost. Number two. The purpose of the promised Pentecost. Pentecost was promised. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Immersion in the Holy Ghost. The baptism in the Holy Ghost was promised. And then it has a purpose. The purpose of the promised Pentecost. Number three, the power from our possessed Pentecost. When you possess that Pentecost, when it becomes a personal heritage in your life, and you possess what he has promised, there is power, and thank God, your weakness will vanish away. Because power will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Number one, tell me number one, personal. I said tell me number one, personal. The promise of your personal Pentecost. Look at the promise of God, the promise of Christ. 
Uh, you remember, any sin and any time, Christ promised anything. He never forgets. Actually, he promised here on earth. And then he went to heaven, making intercession for you and for me and for us. So that this personal Pentecost will be yours. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. Personal. Peter did not look at that as a common thing, general thing for the assembly, for the congregation, for me. John did not look at it as everybody's business, nobody's business. For me, it says, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endeared with power from on high. Thank God it will happen. Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 4, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise. Wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. I've given you the promise. You have heard it of me. Wait for it. Look up here for a moment. If somebody you trust, a close friend, is never lied to you, and is always kind, is always thinking of your good, it's always thinking of what you need before you even realize you need that thing. And then it says, wait here for me. I'm going to bring this for you. It's a necessary, important tool in your life, in the work you're doing so you will succeed. You'll trust him as a friend. You don't have any reason to doubt him. And look at Jesus Christ, Savior, Master, Lord, friend and he says i'm going to bring the promise of the father to you wait for the promise of the father which says he ye have heard of me for john truly really baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence thank god it will happen john chapter 14 in john chapter 14 it tells us in verse 16. See, talking about the promise, John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father. You remember? The Father always heard him. The Father never says no to the only begotten Son. And the only begotten Son, Jesus, was assuring them and assuring us. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter, that she may abide with you for how long? Forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. Look at this. But she know him. How? Because they were born of the spirit. Except a man be born of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Ye know him because you are born of the spirit. For he dwelleth with you. How? Because they have been born again and they were following him and he had given them grace. The spirit of grace was upon them. He dwelleth with you. But now... The promise is, he shall be in you. There are people that say that everything comes such one moment. You're saved, that's all. You have the spirit. You're already baptized in the spirit. Jesus said, the world cannot receive him. You will receive him. Because you know him, you are saved. He dwelleth with you, you are saved. It shall be in you. It was still a future sin. And thank God, it will be in you. I said it will be in you. John chapter 15. The promise of personal Pentecost. John 15. 
Verse 26. But when the comforter is come, he is coming. Whom I will send. You see the promise there? Whom I will send unto you from the Father. Have you noticed that something in the Old Testament and as well as in the New? Anytime God sent an angel to come, the angel always came. There wasn't any delay. And here Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, see the promise he's giving us. He says, this comforter, this Holy Spirit, this Holy Ghost, I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, and he shall testify of me. And he shall testify of me. Chapter 16 of John. John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, look at this, I will send him unto you. You see that the way Jesus spoke to the disciples, he spoke with assurance. There's no shadow of doubt in their minds that as Jesus went, then he'll talk to the Father, and when he gets to heaven, he'll send the Holy Ghost unto them. They saw him go up into heaven. And the angels came and said, Ye men of Galilee, why are you standing here? Gazing up into heaven. Jesus that is going to heaven, that same Jesus will come again in the future to take you unto himself. How are they sure that he actually got to heaven? Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Verse 32. And verse 33. This Jesus has got raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, look at this, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which he now see and hear. He went to heaven. And as he went to heaven, he fulfilled his promise and he sent the Holy Ghost unto them. He's still in heaven. I said he's still in heaven. And he has promised you the Holy Ghost. As he fulfilled for them the promise, he's going to fulfill that promise in your life today in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised for he is faithful that promised and the faithfulness of Christ is still affirmed today and is going to show that faithfulness because tonight, you are going to have a personal Pentecost. I say you are going to have a personal Pentecost. But you know, you must believe the promise. You must not say, can that be for me? Is it not too good to be true? Look at Romans chapter 4. Those, those who receive the promises of God, the fulfillment, they know he's faithful. They know he's able. They know he's willing. And they know he's going to do what he has said he will do. And this is the attitude they have as they come to the Lord. Romans chapter 4 verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Tonight as you come to the Lord, there should be no shadow of doubt in your heart. You're not going to stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. 
being fully persuaded. That's the faith with which you grab and hold and have and possess the promise of God. Be fully persuaded that what he had promised was able also to perform. A performance in your life tonight. I said a performance in your life tonight. And you'll possess in Jesus' name. But the question is, what's the purpose? What's the purpose? What do we have? The Holy Spirit. Why has Christ promised the Holy Spirit unto us? What are we to do? Well, the baptism, the infilling, the indwelling, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Point number two. The purpose of the promised Pentecost. The purpose of the promised Pentecost. If you have something and you don't know the reason why you have that thing, that's going to be underutilized in your life. You'll not understand. You'll not know why you have that thing that is given to you. You might be using it for just one thing when you could have used it for 101 things. That's the reason why we need to know the purpose why we have this promised Pentecost. I'm looking at John chapter 7, verse 37, the purpose. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. It's telling us the purpose of the Holy Ghost. You're thirsty is to quench your thirst. You're spiritually thirsty. You have looked at Moses. You have seen Elijah. You have seen David. You have seen Isaiah. You have seen Ezekiel. You have seen Daniel. And you have seen the lives of the apostles. And that created a desire, a passion in you. If I could be like this, if I could be like that, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink and have that desire satisfied. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What's the purpose of the Holy Ghost? You know, there are times you, you meet people they are dry, they are discouraged, they are weary, and you cannot help them. And you are saying, if I can just have a word that will refresh his life, if I can have a word that will quicken him, energize him, refresh him, it will be wonderful. But I'm sorry I could not help him. I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. And I see people who are discouraged. I can do nothing. And they're looking up to me so that a refreshing will come in their lives. It says, when you have the Holy Ghost baptism, rivers of living water will flow out from you unto others. And you yourself, you'll not be feeling dry every time, weary every time. Forgetful every time because a refreshing will be in your life. Verse 39. But they speak he of the Spirit which they that believe in him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. It's to demonstrate the glory of Christ in your life. When you have the Holy Ghost, the proof that Christ is glorified will be evident in your life. If you speak, he'll be glorified. If you witness, he'll be glorified. The purpose of the promised Pentecost. We're looking at John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. You know, there are times you face a challenge in your life, 
and you just feel yes i know i can read the bible i know that jesus is inside me here greater is he that is in you the need that is in the world i don't feel it i don't sense it i don't seem to possess it i know it's in the bible it brings the reality of the presence of the power of the spirit of god in you when this purpose is fulfilled look at verse 18 I will not leave you comfortless orphans. I will come to you. That's it. When the Holy Ghost comes, the partnership, the fellowship is so real that you know that you are not an orphan. Verse 26. The purpose of the promised Pentecost. In verse 26, for the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. You know, sometimes after you've been a Christian for some time, and uh, people are expecting, you already know the Bible from cover to cover. And then if you read any part of the Bible, you should understand. That's what people think. But sometimes we open the Bible, we, we don't really understand the depth of the meaning there. And it says when that comforter is come, he will teach you all things. Look at what follows. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Uh, when you are a student, you remember sometimes you go to the exam hall and the test is given. The examination is given and you've read your books and you have, you know, you studied everything very well. But just at the time you have to put that thing down on paper, you're forgotten. You cannot remember. And then you try to search your mind, your brain, you still cannot remember. And then you answered other parts you could answer. Although you still had a pass mark. But if you had remembered everything you studied, you'll have come out in flying colors. What I'm saying is, as you look at life, there are challenges that come in life. You come to a crossroad, you don't know what to do. And you come to a challenge in your life, you don't want, you know what to do. And yet, you have read the word of God, you have heard the word of Christ, that when this happens, this is a solution. The faith you have learned about, and the word of God you have learned that you put into practice at that time. It just escaped you. You cannot remember. The presence of the Holy Ghost, it will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's the purpose when you possess that Pentecost chapter 15 of John. Verse 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. He shall testify of me. Jesus is the Son of God. Give me a good amen. amen. Jesus is God. Give me a good amen. Amen. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. There are times you meet people, you are discussing with them, and they don't understand. They're not pretending. They don't understand who Jesus is. The personality of Jesus. The power of Jesus. The infinite attributes, eternal attributes of Christ. And you have, you've read about it before. You've heard that the Bible study before. And the fellow is saying, I'm sincere. Tell me. Prove it to me. Show it to me. And you don't know what to say. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, Jesus said, when that Holy Ghost comes, he shall testify of me. It seems that will bring that watch in your heart. And then you talk to the people you are talking to, they say, you know, I never saw it like that before. Now I understand. Now I see. Look at verse 27. And ye also shall bear witness because 
you have been with me from the beginning. We're coming to chapter 16 of John. John chapter 16, verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. The Lord Jesus was talking to his own disciples. He's been with them for more than three years now, almost three and a half years. And he said, you have learned a lot of things. You know a lot of things. But you know what? There's still many things I've not said unto you. Because you cannot understand. You cannot bear them now. Then look at verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. You see, those disciples following the Lord Jesus Christ, when Matthew started following the Lord, he didn't know he write the gospel according to St. Matthew. And when John started following the Lord, he didn't know he would write the gospel according to St. John. And they were just following him. They are not taking notes. They are not like us. Like you come to the church and you are taking notes. They are not taking notes. And when Jesus was preaching, it was by the mountainside. They didn't even know he was going to give a long sermon on the mount. And then they sat down there. They were listening to him, listening to him. And eventually Jesus Christ went to heaven. And as Jesus went to heaven, the challenge came now. Matthew was all right. The gospel according to St. Matthew. But he had received the Holy Ghost. And from chapter 1 all through, all those miracles, all those utterances, all the Sermon of the Mount, everything, he recollected everything by the Spirit of God. And John, John did it him right immediately. He wrote about 96 A.D. About that, about 60 years after Jesus had gone to heaven. And when the challenge came to write the gospel according to St. John, the Holy Ghost brought everything back, everything back. And look at all that was seen in Luke and in Mark. The Holy Ghost brought everything back to them. That's what the Lord is saying. He's saying, it's not just that, you know, I spoke in tongues, I spoke in tongues, that's good, that's wonderful. That's the initial evidence. It says in verse 13, how be it when he... The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he'll be hearing from heaven, telling you on earth, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Verse 14, he shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Shall show it unto you. Luke chapter 1. The purpose of the promised Pentecost. I pray that the purpose will be fulfilled in your heart. Are you still waiting for the promise? I said are you still waiting for the promise? Or are you tired? I said are you tired? No, you cannot be tired. I know you. You are going to receive the promise of the Father in Jesus name. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16. Luke chapter 1, verse 16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. You want to win converts and you want to turn people away from their sin and you want to turn, turn them to the Savior. How is that going to happen? By the promised Pentecost in your life and he shall go before him. In the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the church to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. If you are going to prepare people ready for the rapture, for the coming of the Lord, you cannot do it in the energy of the flesh. You cannot do it by yourself. You cannot do it by the training you have from men. You stuff your head, which, you know, I read this in the commentary. I read this in this place. I read that in that book. That's not enough. You must have the promised Pentecost. If you're going to be qualified to prepare people for the coming of the Lord. We're looking at Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 11. Luke chapter 12. 
reading from verse 11. And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, take you no thought how or what thing he shall answer or what he shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in that same hour what he ought to say. This is the reason why, because when they were following the Lord Jesus Christ, you can imagine, here was Jesus, and those Pharisees were bombarding him with questions. And Peter must have been thinking, huh, when Christ has gone, because he says he's going, and these people come to ask us all these dribbling, embarrassing questions. Are we going to answer? Should we pay tribute to Caesar or not? If he said they wanted yes or no, pay tribute to Caesar. If he said yes, they said, uh-huh, so you want us to be slaves to the Roman government? If he said no, the Roman soldiers were there. You're teaching them against the king, against Caesar? Are we going to answer the questions when it comes to our turn? Should we pay tribute to Caesar? Show me a coin there. Whose image is that? A superscription? They said Caesar's. They said give unto Caesar the thing that belongs to Caesar and unto God your heart that belongs to God. We caught a woman right-handed in sin. And Moses said, stone her. What do you say? Peter, are you going to answer that? John, are you going to answer that? He was writing on the ground. And then he lifted up his head and he said, He that has no sin, let him cast the first stone. And they all went away one by one. When it comes to our turn, and they ask us questions, and we cannot go and open Malachi or open Isaiah or open Jeremiah to find the answer. Because pay tribute to Caesar or not, the answer is not in the Psalms. The answer is not in the Proverbs. The answer came from heaven into his heart. He gave it to them. Should we stone this woman or not? The answer is not in Leviticus. The answer came from heaven. And Jesus said, after he had gone away, and then you have embarrassing questions like that. Verse 12, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you. The Holy Ghost will teach you. In the same hour, what she ought to say. That's the reason we need the power. We need the baptism, the immersion in the Holy Ghost. Look at this, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 7. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 4, verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked by what power and by what name have you done this? This is a situation that came after they had got the Holy Ghost. After they, had, after they had been baptized in the Holy Ghost. By what power have you done this? By what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. That's exactly what Jesus had promised. That's what the Lord had promised you. You receive the Holy Ghost. Then Peter being filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to this important man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there is no fear in him, no timidity in him. By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which, this is the stone which was set at naught. Of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Look at verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Look at what they noticed after he gave that answer. And you know he gave that answer not from any note he had taken. The Holy Ghost came upon him. And the Holy Ghost made him to say what he said. Verse 13. Now, 
when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. And they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They answered questions just like Jesus. They will not be intimidated just like Jesus. They will not be beaten back just like Jesus. They will not be confused just like Jesus. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And then your word will carry power. I said your word will carry power. Chapter 10 of Acts. Acts chapter 10 verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them that heard the word. Peter was still talking. It was not even getting to preaching on the baptism in the Holy Ghost yet. The Holy Ghost came upon them. You know, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you are talking to people, while you are talking, they can be healed. You didn't hear that? I said, while you are speaking, they can be healed. While you are speaking, they can be convicted of their manner of life. While, while you are speaking, light will come to them. And then they will know this is what to do. And the power of the Holy Ghost can operate in their lives on the day of the circumcision, which believes what was astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that of the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with tongues. Peter did not teach them how to speak in tongues. Peter did not even talk about speaking in tongues. And Peter did not say, this is how we speak in tongues. Say this, say this, say it faster, say it faster, and shout hallelujah. Say it seven times, don't speak your language. It didn't you kind of try to motivate them to speak in tongues. When the Holy Ghost comes, the Holy Ghost knows how to take over your life. He'll take over your heart, take over your tongue, take over all your speech, uh, all your speech uh, tools that are there, and what he needs to speak, he'll speak through you in Jesus' name. It says, for they had them speak with tongues and magnified God. Then uh, answered Peter, can any man forbid water? They are not even be baptized in water. Can anybody forbid water that these should not be baptized? Which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 15. In Acts chapter 13 verse 15. But the Jews turned up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. And they shook up the dust of their feet against them and came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy. Persecution but joy. Misunderstanding, but joy. And the disciples were filled with joy <coughs> and with the Holy Ghost, joy will come. Whatever situation or whatever you are going through, the joy of the Lord will be your strength all the time through in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given us of God. It says, when the Holy Ghost comes, we'll not be ignorant anymore of our inheritance, of the things that are provided for us, of the things that are freely given unto us. The Holy Ghost will point our attention to it. This is yours, and you pick it up. That's yours, and then you take it. That's yours, and you believe for it, because it tells you the price has been paid. 
And the Spirit of God freely tells us, shows us, reveals to us the things that are ours. Verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, that he shall teach you directly, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And of course, you know, there are gifts of the Spirit that he also comes with, because he tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Verse 7, for the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Every man, thank God, you are here. I say, thank God, this one belongs to you too. To every man to profit with all. You make spiritual profit and progress in Jesus' name. But one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith. By the same spirit to another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another, the working of miracles to another, prophecy to another, discerning of spirits to another, diverse kinds of tongues to another, interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit, dividing to how many people? Dividing to tell me out aloud. If you are part of this, dividing to every man severally as he will. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we need to give the honest, more honest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. That is the promise the Lord has given us. Those who are not saved, the promise of salvation, hold on to that, get saved. Those who are to be sanctified, hold on to that, get sanctified. And those who are to be filled, baptized, if the Holy Ghost, come. It's yours. We need to give them more honesty to the things we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them sleep. Look at verse 4. God also bearing them witness. Both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Thank God he will do it. Thank God he'll fulfill the promise in your life. Number one, the promise of personal Pentecost. Number two, the purpose of the promised Pentecost. Number three, the power. Somebody shout power. I mean, you know, you don't shout power in a weak manner. I say shout power. power. Thank God he'll drive every weakness out of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. When his Holy Ghost comes in baptismal measure, he comes with power. And thank God when he comes upon the man, upon the woman, upon the child, the boy, girl, upon the young, upon the old, he comes with power because it's the same with everyone look at acts chapter one the power from our possessed pentecost acts chapter one verse eight but you shall receive power but i will receive power but i will receive power but you shall receive power after that the only ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Thank God it will happen to you. Acts chapter 4, the spirit and the power. The power and the spirit. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had preached, the place was shaking when they were assembled together and they were all filled how? Filled, tell me, of the Holy Ghost and they speak the word of God. How did they speak the word of God? Looking down. I said, how did they speak the word of God? 
afraid of the people they were talking to. How did they speak that word of God? With boldness. Boldness is power. Courage is power. Thank God that's what you have today. Verse 33. And with great power give the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them. How many of them? All. Great power upon you there. Great grace upon you there. Because the Holy Ghost is coming and is going to come in great mighty power. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in watch only, but in power and in the Holy Ghost. That's how the word comes. In power and in the Holy Ghost. Once you are filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Holy Ghost, when you speak that word, it will come with the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. In much assurance, as she know what manner of men were, were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord. A change will happen in the people you are speaking to. Having received the word in much affliction, with the joy, with joy of the Holy Ghost. If you are a naturally somber, uh, morose, and sad personality, when the Holy Ghost comes, it'll change your personality. Joy will be flowing from your heart every time in Jesus' name. You'll not be going around again saying, oh, look what I'm going through, see what I'm going through. The pressure is too much. I don't know whether I can survive till tomorrow. You'll survive till next year. You'll survive beyond next year. The joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. So that you are examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place, every place, every place you go, you are going to leave something behind. Your faith to God's word is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we add unto you. And now ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. You're not be, you know, feeling afraid every time. I don't know whether judgment is still going to come. Wrath is going to, uh, it's going to come. You've passed beyond that because the Holy Ghost is alive in your heart. And I pray that this power of the Holy Ghost tonight, tonight, tonight will be yours in Jesus' name. Everyone that has will receive. I said everyone that has received it. And that's it you are going to receive in Jesus' name. We're looking at Romans, we're looking at Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And thank God tonight, whether you're an overseer or you're a worker, you're a leader, you're a member, or you have just received the Lord Jesus Christ, a Savior, a Sanctifier. Thank God, the power is yours tonight. The power is mine tonight. I said the power is mine tonight. I said the power is mine tonight. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. We're looking at verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look among, look ye out among you, among you. Seven men of honest report, saved and sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, who we may, we may appoint over this business. Look at verse 5. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and he chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and the rest of them. And then look at verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power. And Stephen, full of faith and power. And what's your name? I said, what's your name? I said, what's your name? 
I see you there, I see you here with the eyes of faith. Full of faith, full of power, the great wonders and miracles among the people. Look at verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. They were not able to resist. All the sudden, you know, you say something, and you say, no, I don't accept. No, I don't believe. From tonight, nobody will say no to you. I said nobody will say no to you. Your time of fulfillment has come. Say my time of fulfillment has come. You will not be disappointed. I said you will not be disappointed. You bring your vessel and it will fill you to overflowing tonight in Jesus name. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I'm reading here from verse 9. Luke chapter 11 verse 9. And I say unto you. And I say unto you. Who is the Lord talking to now? Forget everyone and just, uh, just yourself. This yourself. This yourself. And I say unto you. Ask. And it shall be given you. I have assurance tonight. This promise. This power. This unction. This outpouring. Is for you tonight in Jesus name. Ask. And it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 10, uh, this is yours. Say this is mine. For everyone, everyone, for everyone, everyone, your name is here. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. The door of outpouring is open for you today. And the door of the dwelling is open for you today. Look at verse 11. If a son ask bread of any of you that say, Father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he for an egg uh, offer him a scorpion? When you ask for the Holy Ghost, are you going to get evil spirits? No, impossible. The Holy Ghost is coming upon you tonight. He'll fill you inside your heart, inside your soul, soul inside your mind, and eternally, and then there'll be outpouring in Jesus' name. Remember, remember, you are not asking for speaking in tongues. There are people that make a mistake. It's like, you know, you go to you go to the shop, you want to buy a pair of shoes. And as you want to buy the pair of shoes, instead of looking for the pairs of shoes, you're looking for the tongue of the shoe. That's not what you're looking for. Just get the shoe and everything will come with the shoe. I said everything will come with the shoe. I want to buy, I want to buy a pair of shoes. Can I see the lace? That's not what you're looking for. Can I see the tongue? That's not what you're looking for. You're looking for the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is going to come. And when he comes, he comes with knowledge. He comes with light. He comes with enlightenment. He comes with inspiration. He comes with fire. He comes with power. He comes with seal. He comes with understanding. He comes with everything. You're going to have everything in Jesus' name. Everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone that seeketh findeth. He that knocketh, to him it shall be open. Thank God the door is open for you tonight. Look at, look at, look at verse 13. Look at verse 13. If ye then, natural people, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more? How much more? How much more? If you were, if you were thirsty and you asked me for a cup of water, a glass of water, I'll readily give you. If I, a natural man, will give you that glass of water, how much more shall your heavenly father, is your father. I said it's your father. I said it's your father. He loves you and he wants to be a blessing to you. How much more shall your father, heavenly father, give the Holy Spirit to them that, to them that, to them that, anyone, are you going to ask tonight? Who is going to ask? Who is going to ask? Will he give it to you? I said, will he give the Holy Ghost to you? Will he give you power tonight? 
Will you give, give you that inspiration tonight? Will he bring the light to you tonight? Easy. How much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Rise up, ask and receive. Ask and receive. This is yours. It's your privilege. It's your promise. It's what he has said he will give. How much more? How much more? How much more? It's a promise. You don't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. You don't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. You don't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. You're fully persuaded, fully persuaded, fully persuaded. What I ask is given to me. I'm going to receive. I'm going to receive. I'm going to receive. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Everyone, everyone, everyone that has kept receiving. No exception. No exception. The Holy Ghost is coming upon you now. The power is coming upon you now. The night inmate is coming upon you now. The inspiration is coming upon you now. Open door coming upon you now. That assurance coming upon you now. Everyone, everyone, everyone that has kept receivers. Everyone, my brother that's you there. My sister that's you there. My boy, my girl, that's you there. Everyone, everyone, everyone that has sent receivers. Everyone that has sent receivers. Would God that God will pour his spirit upon all flesh. Upon all flesh. Upon the men, upon the women. Upon the old, upon the young. Upon the ladies, upon the handmaidens. Everyone, everyone. Everyone that has sent receivers. He comes in fresh. He comes in like water. It refreshes your life. You feel the coolness right there. You feel the refreshing right there. You feel the assurance right there. You feel the whisper of the Holy Spirit right there. I have come. I have come. I have come. I have entered. I have entered. Receive him. Receive him. It's your guest. Receive him. It's your comforter. Receive him. It's your helper. Receive him. It's your inspirer. Receive him. It's your teacher. Receive him. It's the one that has come to reveal the truth unto you. Receive him. I receive your spirit. Holy Ghost, I receive you. Holy Ghost, I receive you. Welcome. 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 Throw wide open your door. Throw wide open the door of your heart. No discrimination. He comes to everyone. Everyone that has us. Everyone that has us. That's why the refreshing is there. That's why the coolness is there. That's why the calmness is there. That's why the peace is there. He comes with calmness, with coolness, with peace. He comes with refreshing like water. It comes with zeal and heat like fire. It comes with assurance and boldness. It comes with courage. It comes with passion. It comes with a desire to run for God. It comes with inspiration. Understanding of the Bible. It comes with enlightenment. And it comes with a new language. A new utterance. A new power, a new perception. He has come. He has come. You believe, you receive. You believe, you receive. You believe, you receive. You believe, you receive. Praise him. Thank him. Welcome him. He has come. He has come. He has come. Welcome him. Welcome him. Thank you, Lord. I receive. Thank you, Lord. I receive. Thank you, Lord. I receive. And then all the manifestation of his presence. You will feel. You will see. You will sense. You will hear will abide with you from tonight will abide with you forever